All right, let's unpack some of these developments at uh, the City Tane Council. We are joined via Zoom by political analyst Anusha Naidu. A very good afternoon to you. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for being with us. Good afternoon to you, Flo, as well as to the viewers. Lovely to be on the show again with you. Yes. Let's talk about what's going on. I mean, it's, it's such a political spectacle. One doesn't even know where to start when we're talking about uh, Tuane, the, the, the Tuane Council. How have you really been you know, viewing all of what's uh, unfolding there? Yeah, I think the debacle that the council has now faced, both in terms of the election of the mayor and, of course, the challenge around his um, insolvency rehabilitation uh, certificate and now with the speaker, it tells you that, you know, the, the, the crisis and the governance crisis that we're seeing in our municipalities are becoming, it's becoming really untenable. And it's not just, uh, you know, a, a situation of, is it about governance? Is it about what's going on mm. internally, is it that, that these coalitions are not coalescing in the way that they should. But, you, you know, this whole question now with regard to uh, the election of a new speaker, the, the expulsion of the Action SA member in terms of the reasonings that, that are given, it also tells you to a, to a greater extent the internal dynamics of of governance deficit within parties. So it's yeah. the intra-party issues as well that's also coming out into the fold with regard to how we're seeing things unfold, not just in the context of, uh, of, of, of the council, but I think in terms of how the response of political parties have been to their own members and their own kind of challenges and difficulties they experience. I mean, last week, Action SA was going to use a lie detector to see what was going on <laughs> in their own party. The EFF goes and disrupts that. I mean, I've never seen anything like this um, in, 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 in all my years that have been a political analyst. <laughs> right. And I mean, you know, they're now electing um, a, a new speaker, um, of which we anticipate another process of then electing um, a, a new mayor. Um, how can, you know, Tuane, council, all of them, how can they uh, win back the trust of the electorate for following, you know, uh, uh, the, and I use the word confusion, but I think it's a very light word to use when we're talking about what's been happening in, in Tuane. But, but following all that confusion, how are they then meant to, to win back uh, the trust? It's going to be a very difficult task to do, Flo, because I think what you are actually seeing, I mean, being in um, the city of Schwane, in the city of Johannesburg, and let's, see, let's think, let's expect a similar trajectory emerge in the metro in Irkhaleni, because that's another one that's probably uh, bubbling, uh, bubbling over in so many different ways around coalitions and who captures control of the council and of the mayorship and so forth. I think this is uh, perhaps a very, very important lesson in terms of our elections going forward and our electoral process, but also the model that we are using. Because the model that we are using now enables this kind of uh, gerrymandering that's taking place enables this kind of complete lack of accountability to the electorate. And of course, the electorate is, you know, we, we, I've always maintained the electorate is never an underestimated player in a democracy. You've always got to remember that this, the, these votes count. And so to a large extent, I think that the challenge we are having now is that there is no accountability to the electorate. And of course, the trust deficit just becomes even deeper, if not acute. So if I'm, if I'm a resident in the city of Shwane, mm. I'll be looking around me and asking myself the very, very important question is, who deserves my vote next year? Yeah, and, and I mean, on that point, I mean, if you are a resident of Tuane, who are you blaming? Who should take accountability for what's happening in Tuane? I mean, you know, you rightly point out, we're talking coalition politics at this point. So where can you actually uh, point and say that's actually the problem? Or is the coalition itself, the issue of coalition, actually a problem? Are we not ready for that sort of, of, of government? And I see that, you know, there's talk about taking this, in fact, nationally. Yeah. No. So the first thing about coalitions is the question around coalition agreements and how those coalition agreements are structured and what are the built in fail safe me uh, mechanisms to ensure that the electorate is uh, very coherent and clearly understands 
what these coalition politics are. I think the challenge that we as the as the voter needs to start taking on with with political parties as they embark on their political electoral campaigning, and they've already started. I mean, this is no what we're seeing in Shwane, just to, to give you a little bit of a sidebar impression, yeah. is no way to start your election campaigning for 2024. Yeah. And so I think what it does do is that it enables us and empowers us as the electorate in terms of when you have political parties start officially going on the campaign trail, we should ask them, where's your coalition strategy? Mm -hmm. Who are your coalition partners? What is your coalition agreement? And that should be the contract that you, that, that, that the coalition contract that you have to now sign with the electorate. I think very often in South Africa, what happens is that these key questions get peppered over and basically camouflage by the question that, oh, we don't let your democracy down because if you don't vote, this is what's going to happen. Well, people have voted across the spectrum and look at what has happened to coalitions. So I think coalition agreements have to be made much more uh, transparent mm. and coherent, and it has to be integrated into electoral campaign manifestos. The second thing is we have to go back to legislation and how does legislation govern coalitions. And I think one of the things that I, I, I've seen and where we probably as the electorate also need to become more active is the role of active citizen participation, but of civil society. In the run-up to 94, I mean, Flo, you probably also remember this, is how yeah. active civil society was on voter education, on voter, voter participation. Yeah. And I think we need that kind of return of that kind of civic um, movement and the, and, and the strengthening of the civil, civil society in this regard. All right, Zanusha, many thanks to you. As always, great having you on the show, ma'am. We certainly always appreciate your input. Always a pleasure. Take care.